Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're continuing our study on the Nicene Creed. We're in the section now that deals with the Holy Spirit. Remember kind of a rough outline of the creed is that it can begins by confessing God the Father as true God, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Then it confesses that God the Son, Jesus Christ, is true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who was incarnate in flesh to do the work of salvation for us. And now we're gonna talk about the section on the Holy Spirit where we're gonna see that he is true God, equal to the Father and equal to the Spirit. And as we do today, we're gonna to focus on his work of sanctification, how he sets us apart for a holy life and how he works in and through us to, um, to love God, to serve our neighbor and to grow in faith. So the Holy Spirit is our theme for today. We're glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. I rejoice with those who say to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, I rejoice with those who say to me, oh, let us go, let us go to the house of the Lord, let us go where we will praise the name of the Lord. We will fall at his feet and be restored. We will find the peace we're looking for. Let us go to the house of the Lord. our spirits free. There is love that brings us unity. Let us go to the house of the Lord. I rejoice with those who say to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I rejoice with those who say to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. I rejoice with those who say to me, Let us go, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us go house of the Lord. Let us go house of the Lord. Let us go. Hello everybody, welcome to worship today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce unto you the grace of God, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from Psalm 139, the first 18 verses, and then verse 23 and 24. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me into the way of everlasting life. This is the word of our God. Our second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 5, the first 11 verses. But a man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? and keep back for yourself a part of the proceeds of the land. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she, she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside, your, beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. Our next scripture lesson is from Galatians chapter 5, beginning at the 16th verse. But I say, 
walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Our gospel lesson for today is from John chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You also shall live in that day. You will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them. He it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the word of our God. We now join our voices in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Nicene Creed was written to combat a false teacher named Arius. Arius was teaching that Jesus was not fully God, nor was he equal to the Father. So in 325 AD, the Holy Christian Church gathered together at the Council of Nicaea, and they searched scriptures, and they learned the truth that Jesus truly is God. And so they condemned this false teaching and they confessed the truth of Holy Scripture, that Jesus really is God of God, light of light, very God of very God, 
begotten, not made, being of one substance by the Father, by whom all things are made. They boldly confessed the truth of Holy Scripture, that Jesus is indeed God himself. Of course, it was hoped that their action would take care of the heresy and that people would hear and know the truth and they would have nothing more to do with the false teachers. But that's not how it happened. The false teaching, it continued to spread and grow. And within 56 years, the false teaching had now turned its attention on the Holy Spirit. The same thing they were saying about Jesus, they are now saying about the Holy Spirit. They were just as they claimed that Jesus was not God, nor equal to the Father. So now they said that about the Holy Spirit. They were teaching that the Holy Spirit was not fully God, nor was he equal to the Father. Those who taught this false teaching were given the name Pneumomachians, which means enemies of the Spirit. And so the church had to meet again. <coughs> this time it was in 381 AD in the city of Constantinople. It was called the Council of Constantinople, and it added the paragraph that we know today about the Holy Spirit to the Nicene Creed. So now, after 381, the Nicene Creed says this, And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. The goal of all these words is to teach that the Holy Spirit is the one true and only God, equal with God the Father, equal to God the Son. We believe that there is one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was a further development in the confession of the truth of Holy Scripture. It was te they were teaching that the Holy Spirit is God, just as Jesus is God, just as the Father is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And scripture teaches us that God, the Holy Spirit, is at work in our sanctification. That means your coming to faith and your remaining in the faith. That's generally thought of and taught in scripture as the work of the Holy Spirit and the work and the word sanctification captures that. And the Holy Spirit works sanctification in us bringing us into faith and keeping us in the faith in the three ways that he has promised to work his grace and mercy. Holy Scripture, Holy Baptism, and Holy Communion. These three things are holy, which means they belong to God. They are called in theology the means of grace. Because these are the three places where God has promised to work his grace in us, to give us the gifts of salvation, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. They are the ways that God has chosen to work, to create and nurture our faith throughout our lives. And the Holy Spirit is the one who's attributed with working these things in our lives. When you think about the means of grace, Holy Scripture, Holy Baptism, Holy Communion, know that these are God's things. These are the tools the Holy Spirit uses and works with 
to create your faith, to grow and mature your faith, to strengthen your faith throughout your lives. That's why the word of God and holy baptism and holy communion is so important to us as conservative Lutherans. They are objective signs outside of us where God is working in our lives with his grace and his mercy to forgive sins and to strengthen our, our faith. We can go to Holy Scripture. It's outside of us. We remember our baptism. It was done to us. We go to Holy Communion. It's a place where God has given us to go to receive the forgiveness of sins. These are outside of us. They are means of grace. The Holy Spirit works through the means of grace to sanctify you, to bring you to faith, and then to keep you in the faith. One of the interesting things that's taught about the Holy Trinity and specifically the Holy Spirit is that he lives within you in a real yet unexplainable way. The Holy Spirit lives within you so much so that your body is called a temple of the Holy Spirit. A temple is a place where God lives. Your body is where God, the Holy Spirit, lives. And with the Holy Spirit at work within you, on the inside, you are sanctified. You live a holy life. You are empowered to do good works. You speak good words. All of this is accomplished by the power of God at work within you. In daily Christian living, we are dependent on the Lord. We don't live our Christian life by our own power and strength. It's the Holy Spirit at work in and through us. The Bible teaches this to us in many and different ways. There are many synonyms for the work of the Holy Spirit. You'll recognize some of these. You are baptized by the Spirit. You are filled with the Spirit. You are empowered by the Spirit. Sanctified by the Spirit. Born again by the Spirit. Renewed by the Spirit. Helped by the Spirit. Bear fruit by the Spirit. Gifted by the Spirit, sealed by the Spirit. You are to walk in the Spirit. You are led by the Spirit. You live by the Spirit. These all essentially mean the same thing. They just have different nuances with each one of them. There's a different emphasis and, and a different perspective, but it all means the Holy Spirit lives within you and that he's at work in you to sanctify you so that you come to faith and that you remain in faith and live a holy life. That's the unifying idea, is that it's the Holy Spirit within you, sanctifying you so that you live a holy life. And so, because the Holy Spirit lives within you, you love God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your soul. Because the Holy Spirit's at work within you, you love your neighbor as Christ has loved you. Because the Holy Spirit lives, with it, lives within you, godly character traits are seen in your life. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. These are all the work of the Holy Spirit at work within you. Because of the Holy Spirit living within you, you've been getting, given certain gifts for, to use to work in the kingdom of God. Things that you're good at, things that you like to do, things that come naturally for you so that you can serve other people. 
so that you can reach out to the lost, so that you can be involved in the life of a congregation, the body of Christ, as we all work together, serving the Lord, loving other people, and reaching out to the lost. The Holy Spirit living within you does this. He is empowering you. He creates and nurtures your faith. He drives you out to serve others and live a holy and godly life. The Holy Spirit is God himself. 1,700 years ago, godly men and women stood firm on Holy Scripture, and they confessed the truth of the Holy Spirit in the Nicene Creed. Even today, we stand firm on Holy Scripture, and we confess the truth about the Holy Spirit in our day and age as we echo the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. We believe, teach, and confess the deity of the Holy Spirit. He is God, equal to the Father, equal to the Son. Amen. We pray. God, the Holy Spirit, we believe that you are equal to the Father and to the Son. Thank you for creating faith within us through your means of grace. And with those same means of grace, you strengthen our faith and lead us in holy living. Grant us deep conviction of faith an assurance of salvation, and a drive for holy living. Work in and through us so that we may glorify our Father in heaven and love and serve our neighbor. We pray this in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship. my life this walk of faith express it in one story and proclaim it to the world my intent would be that everyone could see on my own I was lost but with you my hope is found came from you every dream I've realized inspired by you any wisdom gained each triumph claim every rescue every miracle explained by you from the depths of my soul This is my life's goal To live each day as someone who 
has faith in you. To trust in you in my darkest hour and know you'll never leave my greatest source of power and should my days run short and death be close at hand let these words testify to the truth on which I stand all I've held in my possession Every dream I've realized inspired by you Any wisdom gained, each triumph claimed Every rescue, every miracle explained by you From the depths of my soul, this is my life's goal Someone who has faith in you All I've held in my possession came from you Every dream I've realized inspired by you Every miracle explained by you From the depths of my soul This is my life's goal To live each day as someone who has faith